Hi guys, so today we're gonna go a little old school. This is a 70 year old camera. Several years ago I put a roll of film in here and I've been shooting with it off and on ever since. Well today I just took my last picture, so it's time to get the film developed. I really have no idea what's on here, but today's the day we're gonna find out, so come on along. <laughs> This is a Voigtlander Vito 2. It's a German camera made in 1949. Uh, I got this from my grandfather who, after World War II, worked in a camera shop in New York City uh, called Willoughby's. It was a really big place, kind of like the B&H of its time. So he got the camera from there. Um, it's basically almost in brand new condition. Uh, it really is in great shape. Uh, I put a roll of film in here. I don't know how long ago. I don't know where I've taken pictures with it. Uh, I just know that I've been using it off and on uh, for the past probably 10 plus years. Uh, so I'm really excited to see what's even on here. Okay, let's see what's in here. I don't even know what kind of film I put in here. Oh, this is my old time favorite. Fuji Riala 100. Let's go get this processed. So, an hour. I gotta wait an hour until the pictures are ready. 60 minutes. I gotta find uh, something to do for the next hour. So, I got gas. I got a car wash. And then I got hungry. So I got an acai bowl. If you haven't had one of these yet, it's basically an acai berry puree. And then they add bananas, blueberries, almonds and cashews, granola, some coconut shavings. It usually has strawberries, but I hate strawberries, so no strawberries for me. Then you could customize it and add things, so I added peanut butter. It's very good, just killing time. Okay, an hour's taking a long time. It's starting to rain. We still have about 10 minutes to go, so let's jump into the controls of the camera and all the, you know, the different manual functions that we have to do to get the exposure. Okay, so this is a rangefinder camera, which basically means you look through the little viewfinder and you see what's on the other side of the viewfinder. You're not actually looking through the lens like you would in an SLR. Uh, so basically, once you determine your exposure, and I'm going to determine that using uh, the light meter on my phone, uh, then you can basically set your settings. So your aperture is down here. Slide this back and forth. That's a 3.5 aperture, that's 5.6, 8, 11, and so on. And then you're going to set your shutter speed using a dial up on top here. So that's 1 25th of a second, 1 tenth of a second, a faster shutter speed up here at 1 300th of a second. Your focus is determined using the focusing ring on top. And that little black arrow points to the distance in feet. So you're going to rotate this until you get to, there's infinity, the correct distance. Again, this is all manual. Then you have to cock the shutter, which is this little lever here. You push it all the way up. The shutter releases this button here, and you're ready to go. Compose your image through the viewfinder, and fire away. Works just the same as your big DSLR, just a little bit more manual control. Plus you gotta wait apparently an hour to see what your picture looks like. And looks like it's time to go, so let's go in. Got him. Let's take a quick look. Oh, negatives. Prince. some old, old photos. Wow, these go back a long time. Well, I got them on a CD also. So I'm gonna throw them in a the computer and check them out. Let's go. Okay, so the first thing I noticed is, even though I had a roll of 36 exposures, uh, I only ended up with about 15 shots or so. I'm sure I didn't wind it up properly in the beginning. I'm sure I rewound it too early at the end. There's a counter on there that I didn't know how to use. 
Um, and I, I think I opened the back a couple of times uh, midway through the roll, so I'm sure I blew out a couple, a couple of exposures. Uh, so of the shots I have left, this is basically what I have. So let's take a look, uh, just see what we have. Uh, this is basically a test shot. You know, you got to find some flowers and take a picture. Um, just to, uh, you know, it gives you an idea of what the colors are like and everything. The greens aren't very nice, but the yellows are decent. The blues are decent. Um, this is a 10-year-old roll of film. Uh, this shot was taken about 10 years ago. Um, this is an anonymous lake upstate New York somewhere. Again, you can see a lot of light leaking in the middle here. Um, I don't know if that had anything to do with the physical structure of the camera or something I messed up in, uh, in exposing the film while it was in there. Uh, this is, uh, again, there's probably a focus problem here. It's a little soft, uh, but otherwise it looks nice. The contrast is okay. Um, if you can tell me where this is, where this lighthouse is, you get bonus points. Uh, this is the boat dock by um, Fort Wilderness. Again, not a terrible shot. Uh, a little bit of focus of focus issue here. The colors are okay though. Cozy Cone Motel. This is at the uh, Art of Animation. Again, you can see some light leaking in the bottom here. I don't know if that's me or an issue with the camera. Standard Epcot shot. Here's my gang on a boat. Not a bad picture for a 70-year-old camera. Getting a little artsy at the art of animation. Uh, wow, this is this look. I mean, it looks like it's from the seventies. This shot, um, but it was taken probably four or five years ago. Uh, the shot from Space Mountain has kind of a cool look to it. Again, you can see the light overexposure here in the middle. I don't know if that's a lens issue or something structural with the camera itself, uh, or just me messing up. But I think that's kind of a cool shot. It has a real retro look to it. Uh, our favorite castle. You can tell this is a new photo even though it looks old. Uh, it has the new turrets um, out front here and the whole hub area is different. Uh, but yeah, this looks like it could have been shot, um, you know, decades ago. This is from summer 2008, so this is a 10 year old image. Um, not great. If you can tell me where this one is, you get extra double bonus points. Um, if you can tell me where this shot was. Uh, but a lot of light problems around the edges here. You can see there's uh, some light creeping in on the bottom. Uh, it's a little soft overall. The colors are kind of muted. Um, so not very representative of probably the film itself. It's probably more limitations on the lens. You know what, actually? I think I have this exact same image from my digital camera uh, that I took at the time. Let me find that. Hold on a second. Okay, I found it. So here you can see. Let's take a look at these two side by side. Here's the image using a film camera, 70-year-old film camera, and here's the exact same image I took the exact same time with my Canon 5D, the original 5D, back in 2008. Uh, pretty startling uh, difference between the two images. Now, some of the limitation, I'm sure, on this film image is operator error. I'm sure I you know, didn't quite do this properly because I'm doing it blindly, but... Um, just to kind of give you an idea. That's a pretty amazing difference. And I can, if I want to, go into Lightroom, add these images into Lightroom, and edit them. Um, it's not going to be quite the same as editing a RAW file or a JPEG, uh, but I can probably get a little bit more color and contrast out of them. So what did I learn? Good question. So the pictures I got with this weren't bad. Uh, I really didn't put much time and effort into you know getting good shots with it. It was just kind of a casual thing. So I think had I spent more time learning how to use the camera and you know getting shots properly, um, probably would have had better results. Uh, but I did definitely uh, gain a new appreciation for um, what photographers had to do 70 years ago. Um, you know when I started, I started in film. Uh, but I started with an SLR, uh, fully automated. The exposure was automatic, the focus was automatic, uh, everything was electronic. Uh, with a camera like this, everything had to be done manually. And, you know, in a medium like photography, I can't think of any other art form uh, where you don't have feedback, you know, immediate feedback as to what you're doing. If you're painting, if you're sketching, you can see right in front of you what exactly you're doing. Uh, if you're creating music, you can hear what you're doing. Um, with this, you know, Photographers were doing this blindly. You know, they would 
do the best they could to compose and to get their all their settings perfect um, and take the shot. But, you know, especially decades ago, you know, you didn't know for hours, uh, you know, what the image looked like. So there's a lot of trial and error. Uh, you know, a lot of planning and forethought had to go into each and every shot that was taken. Um, so it's really very incredible when you look at shots, you know, when you look at photographs uh, that were taken back in the film days. Um, you know, it's easy to forget how difficult uh, photography was back then. So that was a fun little project. Um, I'm not sure what I should do next. I don't know if I should just put this up on a shelf and, you know, use it as a prop uh, or if I should load another roll of film into here. And, um, you know, really take it a little bit more seriously and, you know, really see what I can get out of it. Uh, if I do, I'll let you know. I'll do a whole video about it. But I'm not sure what, what I want to do with that yet. But thanks for following me along on this odd little adventure. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. You know, even if you don't like the video, give it a thumbs up anyway, just for old time's sake. Uh, but subscribe to the channel. Uh, we got a whole lot of fun stuff uh, we're working on. Um, click on the little notification bell. This way you get notified every time we post a video. And uh, thanks for following along. I'll see you next time.